Thanks for all the positive feedback that I received from you from my last video podcast on, on this head uh, Manfrotto 300 Pre panoramic uh, head for a tripod. Uh, let me do some follow up. Before I had my camera set like that and that's incorrect. Uh, basically if you have it like that you cannot tilt it up or down. Uh, that's why you need to put it like that. And now you can, you can unscrew and just make it like that or like that. Actually, with this kind of head, you can make 360, or actually, you know that spherical um, photo merging. So basically, you take all the pictures um, from all the angles, and then you merge it into into three-dimensional or into spheric image uh, done with flash. So um, okay, yeah. What I want to tell you is that I'm really, I really try out this baby for the last couple of days and I came to really nice uh, conclusions and actually I al already have some good plans. I will go and cycle, um, I will do one project that I started already like five years ago or so. Um, I'm planning to cycle in, on Bosnia and Herzegovina and take some landscape pictures. But I will, I will cycle on the, on the border between Republika Srpska and Federation um, side, so basically that's the that's the et ethnical border that was established with Dayton Peace Agreement, and my um, my project will be called Tour de Dayton. So, but before that, let me show some pictures that I've done, or let's say some 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 tests that I've done uh, in last couple of days, and share it with you. Okay, let me show you what I've learned in this couple of days about uh, panoramic. Um, okay, wide angle doesn't really work actually, especially if you if you do it like that. Especially if some of the objects are very near and you do really wide panoramas, I really don't like that. Um, it's much better, let's say, with seven. That was with twenty-four millimeter uh, vertically. Of course, I was photographing vertically. And this is with 70 millimeters. 70 is much nicer, actually. Actually, I think it's 70 to 35. It's perfect. 24 is too much. Uh, yeah, and I was playing around. I was uh, figuring out how the whole thing works. And yeah, uh, one of the things that I learned is that um, HDR, uh, high dynamic range, doesn't really work uh, because when you do different different kind of um, exposures then you can you know uh, because of the wind you know the leaves the grass moves and you know then you have this ghosting effect which really ruins everything so um, hard air I will do with um, hard air is possible only if you shoot landscape like that uh, and then you know it's possible but not these two examples. These two examples are not good, uh, not correctly sh shot. But I love this image of um, of uh, and in the middle like a guy who is cycling. Okay, it will take forever to <laughs> to to load the whole, the full full resolution of this image because it's like twenty five thousand um, by six thousand almost. Anyway, uh, let's continue. Yeah. Yeah, this one I really love as well. Yeah, so you know I learned quite a lot about this, um, about this how the whole thing works, and and somebody asked me how uh, how do you do stitching? Basically, it's quite basic in Photoshop. You go to Photoshop and then you go under File, uh, Automate, and then Photo Merge, and then it will ask you which pictures do you want to merge. You choose pictures that you bracket or you know you made panoramas which is okay and then the kind of layout just figure just try it out and and try it out by yourself it my adv advice is that if you don't have a panoramic head or you you know if you have just standard head or if you shoot just from your uh, for handheld it, it, it is possible but you know you do it um, you do a landscape images like that you know like that um, don't don't do don't do like really close um, panorama something like like that you know it will never work out if you have um, if you have just a normal tripod or even if you're holding it you know hand, hand holding your camera so try it out uh, and you will see how it works 
So basically, I, I figure out how the whole thing works, and now you know my my idea is that I go to cycle to to the project to cycle um, to do my tour de data. You know, if you go to my site borutpetrlin.com and then under Bosnia 2005 Bosnia Tour de Dayton, you will see some images that I've shot um, six years ago. Basically, as I explained you the concept, I was cycling uh, through the Bosnia and photographing, and I really love uh, the landscape of Bosnia and you know the stories that it's it's full of them, uh, it's full of stories um, Bosnia and you know for for me you know who grew grew up in Yugoslavia you know Bosnia was always the um, the ideal of Yugoslavia or let's say an eyeball of Yugoslavia Sarajevo or so so anyway. Um, yeah, I'm planning to cycle through 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 Bosnia, uh, talk with people, do some interviews, and then take also some landscape images. The the my motivation or inspiration is Josef Kudelka and his book Chaos. Uh, but the the book was published I don't know like 2007 or something like that. Basically, when I was a student at FAMU at Prague in Prague. Um, I saw his exhibition in, in I don't know, 2000, no, 1994 or something like that. And um, he was photographing with his camera in format of 6 centimeters by 18. And I love his uh, landscape, um, Bohemia uh, landscape pr uh, project. So, you know, it was always in my back of my mind that I want to do some, some landscape. Um, like, uh, but, you know, good quality, you know, that, you know sort of like Kudelka did it, but you know, we will see how it will go.